What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Project Ozone. Oh, yeah, guys. So we're here back over at the mob farm. I was doing some work over here, just putting in some extra blocks right here along the rails. This way, if we accidentally queue something out of our inventory, it doesn't fall off the edge into the void and is gone forever. Yeah, so I added in some extra blocks around the edge here, the border blocks right below these cobblestone fences. Yep. And then I added some more torches just to light things up a little bit so it's a little bit brighter at nighttime. Nothing can spawn here and nothing can spawn here because of the fences on top. So we are all good. The only thing that can spawn is right inside of here. Now it does look like around the edges uh, that we have light and yeah. But if we hit F7, we can see there's red X's there. That's just like a visual lighting bug kind of a thing. These are completely dark, zero light level. So mob should be able to spawn here. No problem. Uh, yeah, so I after I get them building this, I decided we'd build out a little bit more over this direction. Yeah, to the right of the front of our house. So I just decided to build out about as far as I did on this one. It's about 30 blocks out over here. And then I built out nine blocks this way and then nine blocks that way and this way. So yeah, we got a rectangular platform over here. I was trying to think of what we should build over here. Um, maybe we could move our smeltery. We really don't have a lot of room for it right now. So if we pick that up and set it down over here, I think that would make a little bit more sense. Um, I'm kind of deciding how I want to do this. Normally when I do something like this, I would like to have a floor below so I can access the bottom and you know, maybe some storage or I don't know, whatever. We don't have any way of flight. We don't have a jetpack. We don't really have much, do we? Um, so maybe I will just dig out a thing. We'll just stick this in the floor. I'm going to worry about the underside later. I really would like to get myself a jetpack at some point so we can do a little bit of flying over the void and not worry about dying and killing ourselves. But I don't know if that day is going to be today. Uh, I've been killing monsters. Yeah, we've leveled up our sword a little bit more. We're now adept on our skill level. Uh, we got another thing of quartz on there. So our attack is a little bit higher, which is pretty cool. I don't know if anything else interesting <laughs> with that sword but yeah i've been opening up uh loot bags saving them so we can do the super cheaty ones so we got all these loot bags in here one of those loot bags contain this thing which is a chance ice uh, whatever i don't know it's a glowy sparkly thing of coolness and yeah so i was trying to figure out what this thing is used for come here give it to me yeah these things look at how big the icon is like goes outside of the little box huh uh the use is for this you there we go uh we can make the mining tool the mining multi-tool this says zero percent of the tool is already used so i assume this has multiple charges when we make it but anyway this thing the uses for this is so we can make a dimension changer or we can make the portal frames if we make these portal frames we will be able to go to the aroma 1997 dimensional world it's like a mining world it's always daytime i think uh, yeah, it's just like a flat world made for quarrying. If we can go there, we would be able to collect all of the resources, which would be pretty cool. Yeah, we won't have to worry about the sky block thing. We could, you know, move there essentially. I don't think there's any reason to stay here other than having a void world. But anyway, those are things we'll think about in the future. So yeah, we got some of these. Apparently these are just regular chance cubes, by the way. Uh, you can open them up and the... The luck on them is random. I don't know. I haven't really messed with these things before. I don't know if you get different stuff than like the regular chance cubes or if, <laughs> whatever. Uh, another reason that I would like to go to that mining world, by the way, so we can start opening up these chance cubes. If we do them here, we could potentially spawn like a wither boss. I'm not prepared to deal with that. I'd probably die. It would probably wreck our entire base. It just wouldn't be good. I don't know what else those things can do other than like, you know put your inventory in like an obsidian box or this. It does all sorts of crazy weird things like that. Uh, I don't think we want to do that here at our base. I think we want our base to be as safe as possible. And if we start messing with those chance cubes, we can do it in like a dimension where you don't have anything on us. If we die, whatever, you know, that kind of a deal. Uh, so our smelter is completely empty. I'm going to go ahead and tear this thing down. I think I am going to move it over here. So we have some more room. Uh, we might move our furnaces over there, or we might start setting up more crucibles. So we can make lava and then start producing lava for lava power. Uh, there are lava generators that we can pump lava into, which are not super expensive. Uh, we can pop lo pump lava into them <laughs> and then we can start making RF. 
We can use that RF to generate a pulverizer. We'd have to make one of those. Um, and then we can pulverize the horse armor, for instance, and get more diamonds. The diamonds that we can get out of that will allow us to do the thing. You know, the thing will allow us to get diamonds to make these spikes. We need a lot of spikes or I'm sorry. We need a lot of diamond for the spikes. Let's take a look. We need nine for the block and then we need two per. So we need like 15 diamonds, right? So that's quite a lot. Currently we are at four. That's not a lot. In fact, even if we are able to pulverize uh, both diamond horse armors that we have, that's still not enough diamonds. So we're going to have to figure out something. Anyway, we need to get power running. We need to get stuff hooked up. Let's get going. I'll be back. All right, guys. So I moved the smeltery over to here and I made it one more block tall. We still have a few more of the seared bricks remaining, but yeah, this is what we got going right now. Uh, I decided to have it. So it's kind of like half a block off the ground. These are slabs. These are the bottom side, uh, unspawnable. So that's the full block right there. So yeah, the smeltery is kind of sitting on top of that. Otherwise we just have like a weird little airspace there. Uh, so that's the way it's looking right now. It's not the prettiest thing in the world, but this is what we got going. Uh, we got a lot of space in here. I think that's 27 spots. Uh, yeah, I think it's 27. Nine times three. Mm -hmm. 27 spots to smelt ores and stuff. We also got room over here that we can put our crucibles and make lava and all this stuff. Now, I was talking about how we could do the pulverizer and have lava generation and power generation and all this stuff going. But I think it might be a better idea. Well, we're kind of ha going to have to go hand in hand with this. I think it might be a good idea to start off with the autonomous activators because these are going to allow us to sieve automatically. Now, actually, before we even do that, I think there might even be automatic sieves in this. Yeah, there is actually. And that's an electrum gear, which is electrum and iron for the electrum gear. Uh, but this also requires power. So I guess having the lava generation, the lava power generation is going to be a smart idea to do. Um, yeah, so we got the smeltery set up over here. Let's go ahead and make ourselves a lava generator or two, and we will see, uh, how much resources we have left over. Yeah, we got lots of iron. I have been taking a lot of the stuff we've been getting out of loot bags. I think we needed one block per, per lava generator. Yeah, I've been getting a lot of the iron, the iron armor out of the loot bag. So that's pretty good that we've been getting all this stuff. Uh, so that's pretty inexpensive do we have the gold we have 10 gold we don't we have a golden apple though i believe we can take the golden apple and shmelt it down i did this before and i turned into that weird alloy that's not what i wanted but yeah i'm pretty sure we could smelt this down i don't know if that's eight ingots or not we'll find out how many that is but yeah we're definitely going to need a total of 10 for two of these lava generators and i think we're going to need that many uh, all right, so we got the blocks. Let's start putting things in here. We got the blocks. We got, we need two redstone per, so we're going to need four. We're going to need two fern eye. Oh, I'm going to need another crafting table, I think, to make that. Uh, let's make another crafting table. Doesn't hurt to have a second one, right? Well, we'll just use a vanilla style one. Boop. All right, let's grab some cobblestone. And we will get this crafted. That is the wrong stack. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> ah, clicking the wrong things. All right, here we go. We'll make, we'll make eight furnaces. All right, that sounds good. All right, two in there. So yeah, we just need the 10 gold. So how much gold? I'm going to take some more gold with me, actually. I think we might have some powdered gold or gold sand, or maybe we don't have any of the above. We have gold ore, so we could double that. Yeah, we're out of powdered gold, crushed gold, or we could turn into the sand and then we could smash that with the hammer. Smashy smash. Let's do that. Whoop, get smashed. All right, so we got plus one. All right, so there is uh, two more gold. All right, so we have a total of four gold on us. So that's pretty cool. I thought we had some extra gold that I needed to smash down. I'm looking in here and I don't see any more. Maybe I already smashed it down. I don't, and I didn't realize it. That's probably what happened. So let's grab this gold with us. Yeah, because the way I cast this out, I try and cast out a block. It's just faster than doing ingots. Like if you have six or seven ingots, I'm pretty sure it's faster just to do the block. Uh, so that gave us eight. Cool. So we will put one gold ingot in here. That'll melt it down. Uh, we'll have nine. 
we'll be able to do the uh, the block. Yep. And then the lava's back here, by the way. This is what I did in uh, Infinity Evolved Expert Mode. I put it in the back. <laughs> we'll probably have a drum back here filling it up, or we will be generating lava and pipe it underneath and fill up the lava automatically. That way, I don't really like it in the front because it'd have to be like here or here. Anyway, it just wouldn't be symmetrical. I like it more symmetrical like this. So this is the way we're doing it. So there's nine. Let's go ahead and cast out a single block. Another thing I want to do is upgrade from these seared faucets. A mod that I discovered in Infinity Evolved was translocators. And those are really great for doing things like this. Like you saw how we just had to wait like 10, 15 seconds for that to pour. In, with translocators, it would take like one second. It's like way better. It's like a huge upgrade. Uh, to use those instead of the seared faucets on the smeltery. So I'm going to be making those here pretty soon. I would have made them already, but we were waiting on ender pearls. But the translocators are not super difficult to make. They are a piston, some iron, some redstone, lapis, and ender pearl. I do believe we got a decent amount of ender pearls now. Well, we got five. I thought we had more than that. We don't. Okay, anyway, so let's make two of these. There is two lava generators. Cool. And these don't have a scrap value. I don't know if we can use the the transmutation table on these things. Another thing, I had shown the transmutation. Uh, yeah, I showed the tablet last episode, and I was like, oh, we don't have plutonium, we don't have red matter, and all this stuff. Um, I was told this is a more expensive recipe. There's actually the transmutation table, but guess what? The uh, transmutation tablet requires the table and the recipe, so it's like <laughs> still the same thing. We need these applied energistics to 128 cubed spatial storage cells. I've never made these before. These look really complicated. Well, they're not super complicated, but we don't have the resources to do this just yet. And also need this Eternus, Eternalius fuel block or something. Yeah, we need like the Philosopher's Stone plus this Mobius fuel. The Philosopher's Stone is like ridiculously expensive. We are not there. We're not even close to there. We're not even going to look at that. So anyway, we have uh, some lava generators now. So that's pretty cool. So we can set these guys down and just start getting them generating right now. Let me grab a bucket so we can get some lava into them so they can start doing their thing. Lava, 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 lava. They have an internal storage of 100,000, I think, right? Yeah, 100,000 RF. So even though we're not using the power right now, they can fill up their internal buffer when you break them. They retain the RF. I don't remember if they retain the lava. I don't remember about that part. But anyway, uh, we'll have some decent power stored up and ready to go in a minute for when we get all the things we need. Cool. So we got our gold under control. And what else were we doing here? Let's take a look back at the quest book. Yeah, we're making the autonomous activators. The autonomous activators will allow us to automatically sieve stuff for... Well, it does require a little bit of power. These used to be, uh, they did not, they used to not require power. They do now. So we need a little trickle of power anyway to get these going. Uh, anyway, so we need four tin and one iron ingot to make a tin gear. And this, yeah, we need to make two of these. So we need four of those tin gears. Do we have any tin? I don't think I've smelted tin yet. Uh, what about over here? Do we have tin? We got iron. That's not tin. Let's look. We have 35 powder tin ore. That should be more than enough for what for what we want to do. Okay, that'll give us 16. Put that back. We got some crushed tin ore that we can go ahead and combine, and then we can hit that with the hammer, get the smashy smashy action going. Cool. And that'll allow us to get one more of those. All right, let's go ahead and put these over into our smeltery. We'll get 18. Yeah, we'll get 18 ingots of tin out of there. So two blocks worth. That's pretty cool. All right, let's let that smell down. I'm going to go ahead and start getting the rest of this stuff together. Uh, we need, yeah, just some redstone and gold for the redstone reception coils. Whoops. And just a chest, a piston, nothing fancy here. Yeah, let me go ahead and make these two autonomous activators. We got the power going. We'll complete this quest. We'll be right back, guys. You know, I just realized I forgot to thank you guys for your nice comments and your support on the previous episode. So thank you very much for all the nice comments that give me the tips and tricks and things I should look at. Very much appreciated. And all the likes and the other support that you guys are giving, sharing the video, you know, sharing on Twitter and all this stuff. 
very much appreciated. So guys, I just got done doing this quest and we got our two autonomous activators here. Uh, that's going to give us a photovoltaic cell. I think that's an ender IO item and then another chance cube. Surprise, surprise and a reward bag. So let's claim that. Get claimed. All right. So reward bag. Give me something good. Well, you know what? That's not bad. That, I mean, it's not the best, but it's not bad. I'm not going to complain. We'll just get some more monster drops. So we'll, not you. So we'll put the monster drops away. So photovoltaic cell, photovoltaic cell. I don't know if I've ever used one of these before. It's an Android IO thing. Uh, I guess it only works during the day. Produces power during daylight hours. Must have clear line of sight to the sky. Cool. So I don't know how we get power out of that thing. Let's sleep. My bed's over here. Hi, that's the inside of my head. There's nothing there, guys. It's empty. Completely hollow. All right. So let's take a look. Is this thing getting power? Oh, it's full. Wow. That thing didn't take any time to charge up. Oh, it's got different efficiency levels. I guess as the sun goes up, it gets higher efficiency. I don't know. Like I said, I've never used this thing before. Okay. So we got this. We got the chance cube that we aren't going to be using. We have our autonomous activators. I was looking at the quest book and it looks like we have unlocked the path. We might skip this. We might just skip this for now. Uh, until we can get a decent amount of diamonds, we might just skip this. Uh, automatic sieving. So this is a quest that we have to do anyway. So this is pretty awesome. So it wants us to get a fortune upgrade, a speed upgrade, and an automatic sieve. I didn't even look at these things. Um, the fortune upgrade is, oh, only one diamond, some invar, Electrum, or we can use redstone alloy and some vibrant alloy nuggets. We might, we might have that stuff. Redstone alloy, vibrant alloy. We might have that. We might be ready to do this. All right, so let's do one diamond. We'll do the vibrant. And was it four of those? I think something like that. So there's that. So let's go ahead and get this thing going. They're there. They're there. A little bit of this redstone alloy around the outside and a diamond, right? Diamond. Did I put these in the wrong spot? I feel like I put them in the wrong spot. I did. All right. So we got two fortune upgrade thingies. Awesome. All right. So part of this quest is already done. <laughs> speed upgrade. Let's take a look at this. The speed upgrade is kind of the same thing. Kind of the same thing, except it requires a dark steel ball. We might have enough dark steel. We might, I don't know. All right, so there's five dark steel balls. We have the vibrant alloy. We have the redstone alloy. I don't remember which direction that was supposed to be in. I think the redstone was on the corners and then this was in this maybe. <laughs> I can't remember. I think so. No, I did it wrong twice in a row. Fail. All right, let's put these in the right spot. <sighs> Slow your clicking. Slow your clicking. There we go. We did a speed upgrade. Nice. All right. So automatic sieve, automatic sieve. What do we require for this? So we need the electrum and we're going to have to do the invar now. Dang it. It's hoping we can avoid it, but no, no, we can't. Okay. So invar is nickel and iron. I think we can do that in a smeltery. I don't know. Do we even have nickel? Do we have Ferris. Do we have any of these things? We have nickel. Oh, we do not very much of it, but we do. Okay. What about in like the bigger form? Well, this might be enough to get us by. I really don't know. So that's going to give us two ingots. Let's take a look back in here, there. And so it is two iron plus one nickel gives us three in bar. That is not, that'll give us six. How much do we need? One, two, three, four. That'll be enough. That will definitely be enough. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and get this done. We have the string for the silk mesh. Uh, I'm just going to have to smelt some silver and some gold together in the smeltery. Then we'll make some electrum. Yeah, gold and silver. Cool. Let me get some more crafting done, guys, and we will be right back. Cool. So we had some more silver in here than I thought we did. So, yeah, I was able to make a decent amount of electrum. Actually, I only made like four ingots, right? <laughs> it's not that much, but it's enough to get us by. Uh, so we need... This plus one iron. There we go. Uh, Invar nuggets from making these right here. So there's that plus silk mesh right there. Automatic sieve. Get. Sweet. So this thing, it does require RF. It uses 80 RF per tick apparently. 
These make, I think it's 40 RF per tick. So we need two of these to power one of these constantly. We can put in these upgrades and this increases the RF per tick that it uses. So we don't want to do this right at the start, not until we have a crazy amount of power coming in. Well, not crazy. We just need a decent amount of power and we're not there yet. This thing can go slowly over time, which is fine by me. All right, so we'll pick that thing up. We can pick these up. Yeah, these are done. They made 40,000 RF off one bucket of lava. So we're going to have to find a place for all of these things to go. Another thing we're going to need for this situation is we are going to need a vacuum hopper. Once the automatic sieve or actually, no, I'm wrong. The automatic sieve, when it sieves stuff, it puts all the resources in here. It doesn't send them into the world like the regular uh, sieve does with the autonomous activators. Uh, okay, so we might do this method first. This might be cheaper. I'm not sure if it's faster or slower. Hmm. These are things we're going to have to think about. I'd like to go directly to the, the electric one if we can. <laughs> um, we're going to have to get some resources coming in. We might do both. I don't know if we do the regular one, we are going to need a vacuum hopper to collect all the things. So anyway, let's go into our quest book. Let's go ahead and claim our reward here. We'll pick this reward bag. That one looks good. That gave us a chance cube scanner. I think that only works once we place a chance cube. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I've heard about these chance cubes. They will, or the chance cube scanners, I should say. These will allow you to know if it's going to be lucky or unlucky or how neutral or whatever. Apparently with chance cubes, there are these different pendants you can get. And these will increase or decrease the luckiness. This one uh, increases the chance of chance cubes by plus 100 when the block is broken. Only needs to be in the player's inventory to work, so you don't have to put in your bauble slot or anything like that. Uh, use this pendant to retrieve chance cubes. Oh, okay, so silk touch chance pendant. Oh, well, that's cool. I didn't know there was a way that we could break these things and not actually open them. Yeah, there's all sorts of these different pendants we can get. Reward selector pendant. Shift right click on the... Ch Shift right click to change the reward. Right click a chance cube to summon the reward. Yeah, we'll have to figure out all of this stuff. Some of these things are crazy. Compact giant chance cube. What? <laughs> yeah, some of these things are crazy. I don't know anything about the mod. All I know is that those things are scary and we don't want to do them on this island. We will figure this all out as we progress. So. Uh the automatic sieve. I guess we can do it right here. I kind of forgot that it yeah, I think this might be a good idea. We can put them right here. I kind of forgot that these have an internal inventory and they won't send items all over the world. So what we can do is just start filling this thing full of, I don't know, sand or, you know, dust or whatever, and it'll start doing its thing for us. It is kind of slow. Something like this, I might want to AFK for a few hours, have some stacks going in. We're going to want a way to pull the items out of this thing. Uh, yeah, look at that. Even without having like any fortune upgrades, it's still it's decent. Can we put this in at like the last second and get like crazy good stuff? And then pull it back out? I don't know if that's a thing we should do or not. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, we can collect a lot of good stuff this way. So definitely a good thing. We're probably going to want like a diamond chest. Maybe like a hopper underneath this with a diamond chest. And then have the lava automatically being piped into this. We don't have any liquid or fluid storage or yeah, we don't have any storage or transfer. Can I make like a transfer node or two of these? You know what? I think we're going to do this. So two lapis, a couple iron. What we can do is start pulling the lava directly out of these, piping it over into both of these. And these will keep going and powering this whole thing. I think that might be what we want to do. Let's make ourselves some of these transfer node liquids. We'll do this recipe that requires the ender pearl and a couple of lapis. Uh, ender pearl. What else do we need? Bucket two iron. And we got five buckets down here. And a transfer pipe. I know we got those somewhere. Right here. Found it. All right. Let's make it. Get made. 
All right, so we got that. I think we just need one more transfer pipe, actually, to move our lava where we need it to be. Let's put these things, one here, one there. Like so, there we go. So both of these are now getting lava. They're both running. Yeah, that one's full of lava, this one isn't. No, it is, cool. Yeah, so these are both running. This is gonna make the automatic sieve do its thing. It's a start. It's not the best in the world. In fact, I might even make translocators or something to pull the items out of here and stick it into a diamond chest. I haven't decided what we want to do. What I do know, though, is that we need to get diamonds. Uh, you know what? Probably do the gravel would make more sense instead of the sand. We want to get more diamonds, right? Uh, so putting gravel in here would be the, probably the best way to get diamonds, I think. <laughs> That's like the only way to get them. I'll try sneaking one of those in there at the last second. Actually, I wonder, will this thing run? Oh, it just runs slower. Maybe we should do that. Put the fortune upgrades in there. It'll run slower, but maybe we'll get a better chance for diamonds. I don't know how this all works. We definitely need more power. That's for sure. All right, guys. So the lava generation for our automatic sieve wasn't working too well. So I went ahead and I doubled up the amount of crucibles we have thinking, you know, double the lava will be double the fun. But yeah, even still, the lava generators are not able to keep up with the demands of our automatic sieve. Well, actually, it might be able to a little bit better if I didn't have the fortune and the speed upgrades in here. But yeah, we do have both of those upgrades in there, and we're keeping up with power thanks to this photovoltaic cell we got from that reward. During the daytime, when the sun is out, yes, our photovoltaic cell is producing enough power along with our generators over here to keep this thing full of power and happy and trucking along with the fortune upgrade. Uh, I did do some things here, like I've added a hopper full of gravel. Well, not so much full anymore, but we have a way that we can put in a decent amount of gravel and keep this thing fed. Uh, yeah, the automatic sieve is doing its thing. And then I also made myself a one craft of the item translocators. If you have not seen this mod before, it's a really great item. Its whole purpose is to move stuff from one block to another block. That's it, one block wide or whatever. Uh, the, yeah, you press the little buttons in the center, you right click on these. The Audi goes to the any like so. You can see the flow of the little sparklies in the center. You can add like glowstone to the sending one. It'll send like stacks at a time. You can put redstone on them so you can control, you can control it with a redstone signal. You can also put like a diamond nugget on here. So take a diamond, put it in your crafting grid, you get nine of them, put a diamond nugget on there. And then you can regulate how many items you want to keep in whatever inventory you are sending to. Lots of really good stuff. I just found out about this mod, like I said, in a, in um, Infinity Evolved Expert mode. Got a lot of use out of it. I really like these. <laughs> so anyway, this is the stuff that we've collected so far. It's decent. Not going to complain at all. Almost two stacks worth of iron. We got two diamonds already. We got getting a lot of these other things. And the right amount of copper. Seems like the iron is the most common though. As soon as we can go to like that mining world or some other alternate dimension, the deep dark, anything like that, we'll probably be better off, I would say. We might even be able to go to the deep dark right now, but we don't have a way to get from the ceiling to the floor. I haven't even checked the recipe for this thing. Oh, no, we can't do that. We need the stable, unstable ingots. Okay, so it's a little bit uh, gated here. I didn't realize that. Uh, anyway. We're doing good right now as far as keeping our resources up to snuff. I just need to manually take cobblestone, hit it with the hammer, turn it into gravel, stick it in this hopper, and then we get resources out the other side and just, you know, sleep during the nighttime. I found out you can sleep during the blood moon. I thought that was an event you were not allowed to sleep during, but apparently you can sleep during it. So even if the blood moon rises, I can just go over into my bed, sleep, and we have power once again, and this thing is happy. So that's pretty cool. All right, guys. Well, I tell you what, I think we're going to go and wrap the episode up here for today. I've had a lot of fun getting a basic automation set up. Uh, we got our little smeltery area hooked up over there. We'll probably move our lava production over there at some point in time. We might expand that out too. It feels a little small now that we got the smeltery in there. Yeah, I don't think we're going to have enough room over there on the other side for the lava production. We're probably going to have to make this bigger. But yeah, guys, that's it for today. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to leave a like on this episode if you liked it. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.